Welcome to Intermediate German Grammar, presented by the German Studies Program at Elon University. This video is part four of a five-part series on noun and pronoun function. In the first three videos in this series, we looked at the subject, direct object, and indirect object. Now we'll learn about prepositional phrases. At this point, if you need clarification on what prepositions are and what they do, you can find that video in the playlist. A prepositional phrase consists of a preposition and the noun or pronoun that follows it. The preposition and the noun together form a short phrase that conveys a specific meaning. In the example you see here, the word auf is a preposition and the word stuhl goes with it. Stuhl is technically called the object of the preposition. The prepositional phrase auf dem Stuhl gives us specific information, namely, it tells us where the man is. Here's another example. The word in is a preposition, and the noun die Tasse goes with it. The prepositional phrase in die Tasse tells you the location and direction of the tea, namely, the tea is going into the cup. There's one more thing to know about prepositional phrases. Earlier I mentioned that a noun or pronoun that follows a preposition is called the object of preposition. Together, the preposition and the noun form a prepositional phrase. The other thing to remember is that prepositions determine the case of nouns or pronouns that follow them. To put it differently, when a noun or pronoun is part of a prepositional phrase, its case is determined by the preposition. In other words, nouns and pronouns that follow prepositions such as bis or durch will be in the accusative case. Nouns and pronouns that follow words like aus and ausa will be in the dative case. And nouns and pronouns that follow words like stadt and trotz will be in the genitive case. Most prepositions are apparently randomly assigned to accusative, dative, or genitive, which means that the nouns that follow them take those cases. There is one group of prepositions, known as the two-way prepositions, that is not randomly assigned. Those prepositions require the accusative when showing motion and the dative when showing location. For example, the preposition in can show both motion and location. It is therefore a two-way preposition. When it's used to show motion, it requires the accusative, as in the scene on the left. When it's used to show position, it requires dative, as in the scene on the right. Some students mistakenly apply the two-way rule to all prepositions. It is not true that all prepositions that show motion take accusative. For example, there are some dative prepositions that show motion. The four prepositions on your screen are assigned to dative, which means that any noun following them must go into the dative. Here's the difference. Two-way prepositions have the ability to show both motion and location. The preposition in, for example, can show motion into and location inside. The prepositions on your screen don't have that capacity, therefore they are assigned, apparently randomly, to dative. When you're reading or listening to German, it can be useful to identify objects of preposition and prepositional phrases because it keeps you from mistaking them for direct or indirect objects. For example, some students mistakenly assume that any noun in the accusative must be the direct object. This assumption can cause them to miss the meaning of that part of the sentence. In reality, there is more than one reason a noun or pronoun could be in the accusative. A common one is when the noun is the object of an accusative preposition. Therefore, if you find yourself struggling to understand a sentence that has a lot of nouns, try identifying the prepositional phrases before trying to decipher subject, direct object, and indirect object. By identifying the four prepositional phrases here, I can more easily figure out that the subject of this sentence is the market in Munich even though that's the very last noun in the sentence. That concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit us on the web or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.